everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Walk in Faith. I'm excited. I'm in Manhattan, but today we're going to discuss The Chosen Season 4, and I'm going to hope and pray that we can get some secrets from Noah. But also, Catherine Warnock, thank you so much for joining us. You're the head of content for The Chosen. And Noah, we all know who you are. You're an amazing character. But in case there's one person out there that doesn't know about The Chosen or doesn't know your character, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. I play Andrew, the disciple of Jesus. And the interesting thing, the way the show begins, is you don't know who all of these people are. And then you come to realize that all of these disparate people are becoming the disciples of Jesus. And then the show goes on from there. And I refer to myself as Andrew the Great. I may not be the, <laughs> certainly not the tallest or the strongest. Definitely not the, smartest, not the, the muscles, but, your brother. But there's a spirit of Andrew <laughs> that I love to embody. No, it, it's really a fantastic show. I watched again last night, I watched season three, the finale. The scenes at the end, so moving. And your character too, there's something about your screen presence when I'm watching it, I'm looking for you. Even though, it didn't, like I didn't know I was gonna sit and interview you today, but there's something about you that, especially that first episode, the second episode when you're sitting, I think it's, in, it's not a bar, but it's like that first initial scene and there's something about you that I'm just gravitated towards, and I think of you know, the 600 million people that have watched The Chosen, I think also there's something there. The success of The Chosen is, it's global, right? Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of faith-based mm -hmm. films with my friend Jake off camera, and we've never seen success like this before. And I know we can't just say it's the hand of God, we have to be a little more specific. What do you think it is? Like, how could a show like this sort of transform faith-based content, but also secular content, in a way that it's it's changed and revolutionized the way we watch and programming. What is it? What is the secret? One, accessibility. So there's no hurdles for anyone in the world to watch it, which is stunning and has never been done before. Thanks to technology, the app, free access, you name it, the donation model, how it's crowdsourced, which is extraordinary. But there's the humanity aspect, the authenticity, the permission to be in process. We've never seen the story of Jesus told from this perspective where people are allowed to be humans, where we even see the human side of Jesus. That's never been portrayed in film before. And so people are responding to it in a really stunning way. It is amazing. But you know, you set the bar pretty high. So I mean, now when we're talking to filmmakers or putting together projects, it's no longer just create the content and put it out. There's a lot of thought that needs to go into that idea. Colleges, they're talking about the chosen. I mean, you really have set a bar and it's pretty high. So same as you, I mean, your emotional preparation, how do you prepare to play Andrew. Oh, thank you so much. The responsibility of bringing these characters to life can be something quite daunting. And so I think right in the beginning, it was something that I had to let go and not pay attention to the sort of outside thought about it. And I just really was like, not thinking about the disciple Andrew or Saint Andrew, all the stuff that we mm. think of Andrew 2000 years later. But I just thought, here is a Jewish fisherman who cannot pay his taxes to Rome is about to lose his boat, about to lose his livelihood. That was where I went. And I just went, what would it be like to live 2000 years ago? How can I connect myself to back then? And I think that is what The Chosen does so well, is it's all about authenticity. It's so that the audience can watch at home and feel like, oh, that's what it would feel like to have to build my tent every night out in the woods. That's what following Jesus would really feel like. We're not eating for days at a time. We're sweating, we're bleeding. That is why I think people connect to it. Mm. Even yesterday, I was watching with my son, he's seven, goes to Catholic school, and I always like try to get him to watch certain things, right? It's hard, but he's watching and he keeps looking up and I go, this show's pretty cool, right? Because I have to phrase it, not to say, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I know the story. He knew the story about the loaves and the fish, mm -hmm. but the way it's told and portrayed, even myself, I'm like, wow, it has a different impact on me when I see Jesus, and then to see how he asked everyone to move you know, 100 feet or 200 feet so he could sort of move the message along. And to see that portrayed, it just impacts you so differently. It was like, I heard the story, I've been to Israel several times, but to see it, it just impacts you. It definitely, it wants to fill in some of the gaps. We stick to scripture as well as we possibly can, and then we use artistic license to fill in the gaps. And so that kind of thing with the feeding of the 5,000, you know, you go, oh, right. It would make sense with that many people. How are they all gonna hear that? Exactly. And so to see the disciples go out and you see us hearing Jesus giving the sermon and then giving it to this group, that group, and then how would the dispersing of the fish and the loaves, how would that actually happen? 
it's really remarkable to see it portrayed on the screen. Sometimes you can read scripture in a flat, almost one dimensional way. It's hard to then envision it three dimensionally. I think that's- Oh, I agree. Yeah. Even to see like the disciples, some of them had a different reaction and emotional presence when they were speaking or repeating what Jesus said. Some of them took it for granted, and other ones were really emotionally connected to it. And then I put myself in that character, that position, to think about, I'm reciting what Jesus is saying, like how and what an important role that is. It wasn't exactly what he said. I was trying to listen, because you know, when I repeat someone, we try to uh -huh. break it down, but a lot of it was very specific. But you said something earlier, and I was thinking about the responsibility, right? When you meet people, like we were talking off camera, going mm -hmm. to Williamsburg, you meet these fans. First of all, what I've seen is they, sometimes it's hard for them to separate Noah from Andrew. But then also too, there's such a responsibility. So I know for myself and for you, like this show's walk in faith, like this is me. What I do on a Monday and a Sunday is the same. Mm -hmm. It can be challenging when people see us out. So for you to be a disciple, right? And to walk around, do people look at you in a different way? Is there such an expectation that they see that, you know, like, wait, but you're Andrew and you shouldn't be behaving a certain way. I mean, that's gotta be hard for you, right, the process? I think mostly what it is is that people are so grateful for the show and so loving of what we've been doing with the show and with this story. So mostly we're just approached with gratitude and people wanna come up and just say, you know, even sometimes I'll be out somewhere and someone will just lean in and be like, hey, love your work, love the show. And then they'll like walk away. So all the time that happens and we also get messages daily. I'm going through a rough time. I have a family member in the hospital. These kind of things, it's very real. And so to me, the fact that I get to be a part of a show that can help people in some of the most difficult moments of their life, that's like more than you can ever hope for as an artist. As an actor, I'm just so grateful that I get to be a part of something like that. You're impacting so many people, and in the moment, you're not thinking about that. When mm -hmm. you're preparing, you're not sitting thinking about the woman that's suffering from cancer or, or someone that's going through or close to suicide, but you're impacting and changing their life. The funny thing is that sometimes that does come into play because, you know, when you're acting, you don't know what is going to be getting you there in the moment. You don't know what's affecting you, and so a lot of the times on set, it feels timeless and you do feel like you are connected to humankind throughout time from 2000 years ago all the way to now. And so sometimes that story of someone dealing with a medical issue or something, that is there. That is part of what you're doing when you're trying to help someone in a scene or open your heart, it's there. Mm. But to your immense credit, and I hear the cast speak about this often, because our cast is full of so many different faith backgrounds, worldviews, it's delightful, it's beautiful. And to see how serious each of you take the work that you are doing. So we've all worked in Hollywood. You know, I've worked in Hollywood 20 years and I've never seen anything like this to where we are all acutely aware of this isn't just a creative production. This is transforming lives. This is putting hope back into the world. And to see you all as the cast just day after day turn up and go, okay, this isn't just a normal job. No, definitely not. It's definitely, we understand that yeah. it's not a normal job, but also I think we're able to do that because we are such a family on set. We really love each other. Mm -hmm. We love hanging out. So while we take it as seriously as we possibly can, there's also plenty of times where we have to just be you like have having fun, you have, have to. to be letting off steam because it, it can get challenging it can get really challenging and so we're there for each other you know we make yeah. sure that whoever's on screen they can give the best work they possibly can even if you're you know won't be seen for hours we want to be there for each other we want to make sure that you know again that each one of us is telling a story the best way we can
they're changing and impacting so many people's lives. I mean, first of all, 40 minutes of credits at the end. I mean, I've never, that's a, it's like a million people. Because it was an hour and nine minutes, but it was really an hour and 49. I said, is, is Dallas going to speak? And then I'm like, it's just all names. I mean, that, you're never going to meet all those people. But that's how many people you impact. But I think also, too, there's, for me, I would know personally, there can be also that insecurity. I think of it as the enemy, right? The voice comes, the insecurity comes, the, the negative self-talk, and then I'm like, I'm not good enough. That happens to me mm. all the time. Always, whenever I'm fulfilling or following God's plan or purpose for my life, that voice comes. Does it ever come in the sense, it doesn't be the voice, but anything where the insecurity comes to say, you have 600 million people that are watching this show. I have to really, not to perform, but you know you're impacting so many people. Do you struggle with that at all? It's not the fact that it will be viewed by that many people. To me, when I'm on set, I'm like, how can I tell this story the best way I can? That is where I'll be all of my energy and focus and if I'm feeling insecure or anxious about something, it's really about like, am I getting this right? <laughs> am I, you know, in the third season we go, I visit John the Baptist mm -hmm. in Herod's dungeon. To me, before the season, that's all I'm focused on. I'm going, how can I make sure that we bring this to life? How can I make that impactful? But not going, so many people are going to be watching this. When we get to watch the final version, I go, wow. I can't believe so many people are <laughs> watching it. Because even if three people watched it, I would want to tell that story the best way that I could. And you're right, if it's only three people but you impacted one mm -hmm. versus 100 million and you impact 10, I mean, it's about that one person. And you know, I'm a believer, maybe there's definitely people out there that aren't, that maybe they heard about The Chosen, what would you say to someone out there? I mean, do you have to be a believer or follow in Christ to enjoy and watch The Chosen? That's what I love about The Chosen, absolutely not. A huge amount of our fan base are not Christians at all. Of course we have the spectrum of Christianity, right? We have Baptists, we have Catholics, we have Evangelicals, Charismatics, you name it. But we also have Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, Atheists, Agnostics. I've never seen anything like that before to where a show about the life of Jesus is deeply unifying and just purely giving hope. And we receive emails all the time of people saying, hey, I'm not a Christian, but I'm now like a student of Jesus. Mm. I remember we have a Hindu man, he was a tech giant in Silicon Valley. And he wrote us, he said, how can I help you? I'm Hindu, but even your show is giving the light back to my people. How can I help you? And that's extraordinary. Beautiful, it's just unconditional love. Yeah. And even on the last episode of season three, that's what Jesus was talking yeah. about. Just about love and, and uniting everyone. No, it's such a powerful show. I, I mean, I remember years ago when we worked at the TV station, when they sent us the pilot. And they were still raising the money. We put it on like 20 times trying to get, just try to help. And then there was a pause and, and to see how far you've come. Oh, when we started, we had no idea that we would do more than four episodes. <laughs> so we didn't even finish the first season. And then when we were done filming the Miracle of the Fish, we really said goodbye to each other. We didn't know for the cast, the crew. You know, I'm in the hair and makeup trailer and I'm like, I really hope I get to see you all again. I hope I get to work with you all again. And so from that to now where we have finished filming the fourth season, it's about to come out. It's, it's really remarkable. And now tell us some secrets about the season, season four. <laughs> okay, secret <laughs> one. Yeah, no. okay, I, I've interviewed, I don't know how many times with The Chosen, and no, you don't, nobody lets anything out. It's like you have to sign a contract, you can't say anything. It's so when just you go on Pix11 or Sean Hannity, you're not gonna say anything. It's just that it's honestly, I think that this season is the most impactful yet. When I read it, I honestly was shocked literally did not know how much ground we were gonna cover mm. emotionally and time-wise. I mean, there's just, it's jam-packed. We understand what's coming. We know what the audience is about to see and how much it's about to impact them. We don't wanna ruin that. We don't. It's, it's really amazing. The trailer is unbelievable. To see how far we've come, right? Yeah. From all those years. I think it's interesting too, the way it's gonna be rolled out in February with Fathom. And it reminded me of when my parents were young, they would go to the movies every Saturday right, with a quarter, and they would get a film, they would get popcorn, obviously nothing would do anything with a quarter anymore. But <laughs> I wish it was still a quarter. Yeah, <laughs> they can't do anything, but the way you're rolling it out reminds me of that. So tell us a little bit about February 1st, how does it work? We are the first series ever to roll out in an entire season in theaters. So it will be episodes one through three will be rolled out over about a two week window, and then we'll roll out the next two episodes and so on. And so it will just be a staggered approach and will be longer forms. We'll have, on the first two goes, we'll have intermissions because it's oh. 
pretty long, as you mentioned. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we have some surprises this season. We start seeing the stepping stones laid. We know where Judas's story is headed. How does Judas get there? So we start laying the groundwork for that doubting Thomas. Why does he have that name? We think we know. Mm -hmm. We have some story to tell there um, that I think is profoundly impactful. And Noah and I, when we read it, we were just like, wait, what? Yeah. This is how we get here? So it's going to be a season with some big curveballs. In some ways, it's an invitation to the audience to say, are you ready to take this journey with us? This season, I think more so than any other, is like, let's get ready, let's hop on, because it's a tough ride, but it is worth it. And I think one of the themes of the season really is that as dark as it can get, there's always light to look for. And so I'm excited to see how people... Wow. And when you said, are you ready, too, like it made me think about people searching their own soul, mm -hmm. you know, because for a lot of us, for me, there was always that knock. I always felt like God was chasing me down, but I kept ignoring it. And when you said that, it reminds me of that. And there was going to be a lot of people in that audience that have been along for the ride. And now it's sort of like they felt that call to Christ or mm. they felt that call. Just that word, are you ready? There's a lot of mm. people that I think are just searching. And this show has definitely impacted. I feel like when you create content like this, high-end content, people that are not religious or not followers of Christ, they watch it, the seed is planted, and then they slowly develop this relationship. Mm. You know, And that's what I really feel like The Chosen has done. But you've impacted so many people's lives. Is there one story, I know you said briefly, but is there anyone that really stands out that really touched your heart. This season a family came to visit the set. Without going into too many sort of specific details, there was a family member who was not doing well health-wise, and they were there with us. The synchronicity of them being there and what we were filming and how so often in The Chosen we are, you know, there's healings. There are moments where you were trying to help anyone you can as a disciple, and they were witnessing a scene that I don't even know if they were aware that it was leading to one of the famous miracles. That to us kind of opened our eyes. You know, we were at the tail end of shooting, so we were like hobbling to the finish line. It felt like it's so hot outside, but then them there, it just takes you totally out of yourself and you go, that's right, that's why we're doing it. That was a really, really touching moment. And that's, again, that's one family, but we get those kind of messages all the time. But again, it, it matters, that one person having their day in some small way even brightened by what we're doing, it really brings you back to why we're doing this. And there's no coincidences. So for the probability of that person being there that day with mm -hmm. that scene, to me, it's the hand mm -hmm. of God. This has to have impacted you as well. How yeah. has this show changed your life? It's definitely changed my life. But what's funny is I came into the show, so I'm Jewish. I came in totally from outside of the Christian world and I had like no idea what to expect. I'm flying in the mid to the middle of Texas where I'm like, I'm a city boy and I don't know whether I'm going to be sort of welcomed or, you know, what that's going to be. And I was welcomed with open arms. It was a true family all the way from the top. Dallas and everyone with production, the cast. And again, we come from all different backgrounds, all walks of life, belief systems. And that family aspect, we really understood we are here to tell the story the best way we possibly can. It doesn't matter where you come from, what your belief system is. And so to me, it really opened my eyes and it made me, you know, I thought before coming into the show that I'm an, a pretty open-minded guy, but I realized that there was a blind spot in my sort of worldview and even just the people that I know and surround myself with. The people that work on The Chosen, with The Chosen, some people that I would have never met in my life had I not joined this family. And so I'm just so grateful to have been brought into this production, into this group, and it's been truly life-changing. And I love that you were honest about that, even though you didn't share it, the blind spot. Because mm. we all have that. We mm -hmm. all have, especially when you stay within your own little circle. Like you could, you don't realize other people what they're going through, and mm. totally and to be open-minded to your beliefs and yeah. how we can see that we're all the same. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a lot in common. I love the fact that you have so many diverse religions and, and backgrounds and different types of people that work on on the show. So season four, February first. What do you hope the fans or just people in general walk away with after seeing season four? 
hope that in the midst of tragedy there can always be joy, there can always be peace. And it's to the degree of what Noah said. Are we ready? Are we ready to really live life with purpose? Are we really ready to live life in community when it's hard? For me, the message of perseverance, I think we all like really cry out for joy and peace and we want that rest in life. But sometimes we just need to be reminded that perseverance is equally as needed. That grit, ability of the human spirit to just persevere. And I think the show communicates that really beautifully, especially in this season. Mm, I love that perseverance. And at the end of season three, right, we all want to know that Jesus' hand is there pulling us along. Because sometimes in the midst of life and just chaos, we forget, right? We forget that Jesus is there and we lean on him only when we need things, not realizing that he's only two feet away. He's just, he's always within us. He's always within our reach. I really appreciate this opportunity. So thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize your words and actions. God bless you. Hey everybody, it's Craig Syracuse. I'm the host of Walk in Faith and I'm also the executive director of the Emmaus Center. If you would like to find out ways that you can contribute and help us bring the word of God, help us evangelize, please log on to EmmausBrooklyn.org for more information. God bless you. It's time. What wondrous love is this? Oh, my Listen carefully soul, to my words. Oh, my soul. There are those for whom this will set off a series of events. What wondrous love is this? Oh, my soul. My followers won't understand. The Son of Man must suffer many things. You are the Son of God. What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss? I know it's hard. Man makes it much harder. To bear the dreadful curse. When he leans on his own understanding. To bear the dreadful curse. Dread what is to come. Story nearing its end. For my soul.